dusk on the African savanna, and a hungry cheetah spots a welcome sight, a herd of Cape buffalo. If she's to get a meal, she must separate a young one from the herd. But before she can make her move, a lion ambles onto the scene. And the skittish herd stampedes. Most of us are drawn to the drama and spectacle of great animals like these. Whether it is lions in the African bush, or a zebra herd in captivity, like here in the San Diego Wild Animal Park, there is something fascinating in the remarkable variety of animal types. From sleek and athletic gazelles, to the armored mass of the rhinoceros. Considering how different these animals look, it might surprise you to learn that they actually have much in common. This is Joan Embry. She is part of the staff at the San Diego Zoo and is an expert animal handler. All of the animals we have just seen are related. There are members of one of the most successful groups of animals on Earth, the mammals. A few special features set mammals apart from all other animals. For one thing, only mammals have hair. The hair acts as insulation as well as protection against injury. Another strictly mammalian trait is outer ears. In some, they are large. In others, they are small. But all function to collect and transmit sound to the inner ear. Finally, all mammals feed their young milk produced in modified sweat glands called mammary glands. In fact, from the mammary gland comes the name mammal. In addition to the presence of hair, outer ears, and mammary glands, mammals also differ from fish, birds, and other vertebrates and the exceptional development of their heart and their brain. By comparison, the fish heart is simple. It receives oxygen-poor blood from the fish's body and pushes it up toward the gills where the blood is oxygenated. An amphibian's heart is much more complex because attached to it are tubes leading to and from the lungs. Oxygen-rich blood from the lungs enters the heart and mixes with the oxygen-poor blood. This mixture is then pushed out to supply the oxygen needs of the amphibian's body. This mixing of oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood is a bit inefficient, and in reptiles, such as the alligator, the mixing problem is partially solved. The reptile heart has a wall of tissue that divides the main heart chamber into two parts, but the wall is not complete and some mixing still occurs. In the mammal heart, the wall is complete and no mixing occurs. This is called a four-chambered heart. One, two, three, four. The efficiency of the four-chambered heart allows mammals to maintain a vigorous metabolism. Another way mammals differ from other vertebrates is in the development of their brain. All vertebrates have the same basic brain structure. Where they differ is in brain size and complexity. The fish brain is relatively small and simple. In reptiles, such as this crocodile, the brain is a bit larger and has a more complex structure. The brain of the bird is larger yet. It shows a strong development of those parts involved with vision. The vertebrates with the largest brains are mammals, especially the primates, like monkeys, apes, and humans. The large size of the mammal brain is due to the exceptional development of this part, the cerebral cortex. It is this large and complex cerebral cortex that gives mammals their strong ability to learn and remember. For all their common features, mammals do have their differences as well. One of their most fundamental differences is the way they have offspring. Most mammals give birth to live young 
after the offspring has first developed inside the mother. A special organ called a placenta connects the young mammal directly to the circulatory system of its mother. Nutrients and oxygen from the mother's blood pass across the tissues of the placenta into the blood of the developing fetus. After weeks of growth and change, the baby is born. A headfirst fall from two meters seems like a rough way to come into the world, but the baby giraffe isn't hurt. A few licks from mom help build a special bond between the baby and its mother. At birth, a giraffe baby is two meters tall and weighs nearly 70 kilograms. Within a month, he will begin to browse shrubs and small trees. But his first order of business is to get to his feet. Not all mammals form placentas. Some, like these kangaroos, carry their developing young in a warm pouch outside the mother's body. These mammals are called marsupials, and they include koalas and opossums. Finally, in addition to placentals and marsupials, there are even a few mammals that lay eggs. And here is an example, the spiny anteater from Australia. Egg-laying mammals are called monotremes, and despite their curious habits, they still show mammal features, such as mammary glands, and stiff, bristly hair. How is it that mammals have been able to adapt to life in so many environments? The secret of their success is their flexible body plan. The fundamental mammal body is a head, a trunk, and two pairs of limbs. From this, natural selection has been able to shape creatures ideally suited for life on land, for life in the sky, and even for life in the water. You can find mammals just about anywhere you look. And the mammal you're most likely to find when you do look is a rodent. Mice, rats, squirrels, and hamsters are all rodents. Rodents are distributed worldwide, and there are a number of reasons for their success. First, rodents can reproduce very quickly. Some have a new litter of three or four babies as often as once a month. Second, because of their small size, large numbers of rodents can live in a limited space. And finally, rodents have two chisel-sharp teeth that are ideal for gnawing. One of the largest rodents is the beaver. Natural swimmers, beavers are found along waterways, where they build dams and lodges for mud and tree cuttings. Beaver young, or kits, are born inside the snug protection of the lodge, and here they stay, tended by their mother, until they are two years old. Each of the more than 4,500 mammal types is specially adapted for life in its environment. For example, most primates are tree dwellers, so their hands and feet are well suited for climbing. It's an example of the flexible mammalian body plan. In this case, the bones of the limbs are perfectly adapted for grasping and swinging. Another example of a mammal adapting for a special environment is the bat, the only mammal that can truly fly. Bats generally live and fly in groups. They are active only at night.
like most bats, are insect eaters, chasing down and capturing their prey in flight. A bat's wing is made of a flexible flap of skin stretched over long arm and hand bones. Once again, the basic mammal body plan has been specially modified. In this case, the last four bones of the hand have become long and thin to form a wing. A very large and wet relative of the bat is the whale, one of several swimming mammals. Like all mammals, whales breathe air. They take a breath at the surface through an opening on the back of their head called a blowhole. Even in the whale, you can still recognize the mammal body plan. Head, trunk, back limbs that have fused to form a tail, and front limbs that have become flippers. Looking inside, we discover that the limb bones of the whale have a structure common to all mammals. Including the bat's wing and the primate's arm. They all have an upper arm bone, two lower arm bones, wrist bones, and five digits. Another important trait of mammals is that parents spend a lot of time taking care of their young and that the young have a childhood. It is during childhood that young mammals learn about the world. Parents protect the curious youngsters from danger and greatly increase their chance of surviving. The young watch their parents' daily activities and learn how to find food and defend against enemies. It's because of their large and complex brains that mammals are able to pass survival information from generation to generation through learning. And the mammals with the most exceptional learning ability are the primates, monkeys, apes, and human beings. The active curiosity and learning ability of primates set them apart from other mammals but they are still mammals. They have hair and outer ears. They nurse their young. And they have the mammalian body plan, head, trunk, and two pairs of limbs. Many primates have discovered that their tree climbing hands and fingers are also useful for picking up and handling small objects. In humans, the dexterous hand and primate intellect have given our species an advantage no other creature has. Rather than our bodies adapting to suit new environments, we humans move into new environments by building special devices. The tools and machines fashioned by our hands and our minds allow us to fly, and even to live in environments where no other living creature can exist. It might seem that we have risen far above our mammalian relatives, but really, intellect is just another special adaptation, and with it, we are probing new and wondrous environments, much like the ancestral mammals that came before us.